In this how-to video, I will walk through how to integrate a K2 application with an external SQL Server database. In other words, you will learn how to expose SQL Server database tables, views, and stored procedures to one of your K2-based applications. I'm assuming you are familiar with the concept of K2 smart objects and how they tie data into K2 applications, mainly workflows, forms, and reports, so I won't dwell on as much concept explanation here. The goal here is to show you how to wire up a SQL Server service instance to a smart object and a view. To save some time, I do have the K2 management site already open in my environment here on the screen. Before we can create a smart object for this database, we first need to provide K2 with the connection information and expose a database and its objects as a service by creating a service instance in the K2 environment. To create a new SQL Server service instance, you can open up the integration group of menu options on the left side of the management site page, then select service types, page through the list of service type options, or you can search for it using the search box at the top, select that service type from the list and click the new instance button at the top of the list of options. In the dialog window that pops up, we can configure the service instance with the following settings. For display name, I'll enter in K2 Tutorial SQL Database. Make a note, for this value, you may want to use a naming convention that does make sense for your own organization's environment, as this will show up in the K2 Service Instance list that's visible to other developers or administrators. Next, I'll enter in a description. We then have various authentication modes available for connection to our SQL databases. Those include using the K2 server's service account directly. You could also use impersonation, single sign-on, or set it to be static where you provide a SQL username and password. And finally, you could set up OAuth. In this example, I'm going to set the authentication mode to static and just provide a static username and password to connect to the sample SQL database. You can review the user guide for K2.5 or K2 Cloud on help.k2.com where we have documentation that discusses considerations when using each of these authentication modes. Let's take a look at the service key settings that we need to set up for this demonstration. Note that you can review documentation on the SQL Server service type for more details on the service key settings that are available for this particular service type. Because I'm going to be working with an Azure hosted SQL database, I'm going to need to set on different SQL Server to true. However, when connecting to a database that is on the same server as your K2 database, you will need to have this setting set to false. I'll change the command timeout to 90. You can adjust this to help cater for high load in your database environment if necessary. The database I will be targeting on my instance of SQL Server is called K2 Learning. Next, I'll enter in the data server name that's hosting this database. It happens to be living out in Azure. I'm going to set use native SQL execution to false for this example since it is not necessary. And I'll leave the rest of these settings alone at this point. We're good with the rest of the defaults and I'm not interested in generating smart objects for this service type just yet. We can move on. I'll click OK to create the new service instance. K2 is now going to discover the target SQL database and generate service objects for each of the tables, views, and stored procedures in that database. The sample database is a very simple database with only a few SQL entities, but the approach would be the same for any other SQL database that you need to use. Also keep in mind this may take a few seconds depending on where your database lives. This looks good, so I'll close this window and go back to the service instances area in the management site. And notice now we have a new service instance for this database showing in the list. Once the database's service instance is registered, it's time to create the smart objects you will need. You do have the option to manually create smart objects off your service instance in K2 Designer if you need to be more specific in your configuration, or you can automatically generate them if you're okay with K2 setting up the properties and methods on its own. In this example, I'm just going to automatically generate a smart object for an expense category table in this database. I'll begin by selecting the new service instance for this database from the list. Then I'll click on the Generate Smart Objects button to open that window up. 
Notice we have service objects that point to groups of tables and views that are available in this database. From here, I can expand the Tables category to locate the Finance Expense Category table reference. I'll put a check in the box next to that table. In this case, I'm only setting up one table, but you do have the option to select other tables and views here to generate smart objects for these entities if you'd like to make them available through smart object capability in one step. I'll click OK at this point. When that finishes, we can go over to the Categories menu option on the left side of the page, open it up, go into the SQL Server Service group, and drill down into the Tables group under K2 Tutorial SQL Database, where we can find our new smart object for Expense category. Let's give it a quick test. To do this, select the smart object, then under Methods, select the List method. I'll leave the filters empty for now and just click the Execute button. At this point, we should see a list of expense categories returned, which proves that we will be able to use this database in our forms later on. That's all there is to setting up a service instance and smart object. Let's quickly jump over to K2 Designer and generate a simple view for this smart object table. We can now create a view for this smart object by using K2 Designer, which has access to the category structure and smart objects living in our K2 environment. Remember, K2 created this new smart object inside the SQL Server service top-level category, so I'll open that category up and drill down in to find it. To demonstrate the point, all you have to do to make a basic view for use in a K2 smart form is select the smart object, then click on the option to generate a view. This option allows K2 to generate a list view, an item view for editing, and you also have the option to generate a smart form down in the lower section if you want. In this demo, I'll actually select item view and list view along with the form option. This will give us a quick way to create a form to help manage data in this database table. Before moving on, notice that you also have the ability to select the categories for your views and forms to live in accordingly. I did create two category folders under an expense claims category, one called views and one called forms. I'll select those for each of these options to help organize my K2 environment a little bit better. The form behaviors are okay as they are set for now, so I'll click okay to generate the views and forms. At this point, K2 is generating an item view, a list view, and placing them inside a new form. Okay, it looks like these items are ready. I'll open the form by selecting it in the Category Browser, then we can use the Run option that appears to load up the form. Keep in mind this may take a few seconds to load up the first time. This looks good. Now with a little bit more editing, we can use this form to manage data in the Expense Claim Category Database table for an application. This is all possible through the smart object that we just created with the SQL Server service type.